you start off pretty simple where we will take just simple little objects like this and these are great to work with puppies. They're flat, they're easy to stand on, sometimes they have different types of textures and we put these down as targets. And even a puppy who has just been weaned that's getting on some solid food now, you can have that little piece of kibble or whatever you're feeding your dogs and you can lead them with your hand to the object, say touch, point to it and when they touch you give them the little treat. And it's as simple as that. Now, what you're doing here is a couple of things. One of the things you're doing is you're establishing yourself as the leader because you're getting them to do that. The second thing that you're doing is you're starting to establish that communication with your hand. So that hand is leading them to that object right there. Now, you want to start off easy and go to complex. So you start off with like a smooth surface like that maybe flip it over so now it has different texture on it. By going with different texture you'll find that sometimes the dogs don't want to touch that texture. Now if you have a dog that refuses touching a target then that's your your frustration point, your failure point right there where you want to work through. Mm -hmm. Let me see if he's going to try to make you look. He probably will. Rumba, come here. Rumba, up, up. Rumba, up. Come on, up. Rumba, up. Good boy. <laughs> I love you. Yes, I do. Okay, your turn. <laughs> Bless you. and try and get him to put his front feet up. And what do you feel that that's going to accomplish when you get him to put his front feet up? I'll be in control of the situation. Okay. So, and probably more importantly, you're, you're demonstrating to him your leadership. And that will allow you and him to work together better as a team because you're earning that respect. Right. Okay, perfect. Let's see. So before starting exercises, you start off with the head straight and that establishes your leadership right there. He will work for you better when you do that. What are some other times where you might do the head straight? Um, right before we're about to go in the ring, right before we're about to do anything that I want to be in control of the situation with. Okay. What if he starts eyeballing another dog or you see potential problems getting ready to start? I would get his attention and start doing the head straight. That way I take control of the situation again. Perfect. Okay. Here. Good boy. Wow, he did that great for you. Good job. Let's go. Good boy. Wow. Yes. Good. Nice. Now that was one he wouldn't do for you last time. Yes. Last time he refused to do it for me. Fantastic. Good job. Awesome. Uh, you can use dogs as a gauge. Like for instance, if I try to lead the dog onto this texture here from that and they don't want to touch this, they don't fully respect and trust you yet to do something like this that they don't want to do. So if you can work with the dog and get them to respect and trust you and they touch that willingly, then now you gain some ground there by earning respect and trust. So you don't have to go online and buy a lot of expensive stuff. You can get scraps of different types of material. 
you know, different things like this with different texture. These are great for inside of lining drawers and stuff like that. Then obviously if you're a macho person, you use the diamond pattern right here. Um, Patty, who is uh, sitting over there in the back, is the master at finding all kinds of different things. Patty is a, an extremely knowledgeable person on nutrition. She is the person who's responsible for Northwest Natural, the treats that we've been giving all the dogs here. Um, and she also runs, co-owns the facility and runs the Fit Paws training program here at Mind Your Manners. So every Wednesday night, people get together here and they work on the Fit Paws equipment under her guidance, doing stretching and all kinds of fun stuff with these dogs. And it, she was the one that was in the video with the puppy doing the puppy training too. But get fun, you know, make it fun, do all kinds of really cool things. And then once your puppies get comfortable with this, then we can get into doing some actual work. And if you have a very strong-willed dog, that's what will happen. And here's what happens with the people, is the people will think, okay, I'm doing this exercise, but I'm not getting anywhere. The reason why you're not getting anywhere is because the dog is being very sneaky and sneaking in this dominance right here. Okay, so this is Ponder. He's an Australian cattle dog. He is ranked number 11 in the country number 11 in the country, and he will only do what you ask if you ask correctly. Uh, he has a very, very strong mind. Okay, I want him to touch just that little target right there. Good. Once they touch the target, you reward them. Now, what I want you guys to do is pay very close attention to Maddie's hand with the lead in it and how she will lead him to a target and tell him and give him a command to touch that target. Okay, take him to the, the blue bone. Very nice. Okay, Maddie, kind of uh, what you're gonna do is I want you to take him to this target, but I want you to let him show the people what a dog would normally do as you start to get into this training where he wants to lead you to this. So break that hand communication. Let's see what he does. Okay, so what she did was walk over to the target. Now, what amazing thing just happened is he kept looking at her hand for direction. Did you guys see that? That's a big success right there. Let's give a hand. Because she's worked so hard to get that dog to do that, we can't get him to do it incorrectly now. I'm sure we'll be able to find some people with dogs that we can do this incorrectly with. So you notice that he's just glued in on her hands right there. This is going to teach so many things. See if you can get him to get his rear feet on the pad. There we go, good. So what we wanna to do to start this little game off to really get our dogs to start working for us is we wanna start off with an easy surface, which usually is not bumpy or off angled like this one here, and we get them to touch with their front paws. Now go ahead and get him balanced on this one here with just his front paws, and I want him facing that direction. So now she can get in front of him and she can kind of rock back and forth and you'll see him using those muscles. See him, you can see those muscles flexing. That's gonna give him a very strong body core. So we're putting ourselves in a leadership role. He's having fun doing this and we're working from simple to complex and we're starting off with just the front feet. Okay, Maddie, go ahead and get him on the rear feet now. Okay, so now he's on the rear feet and he, she can go back and forth and strengthen that rear up. So you can really isolate what you need to have done when you're doing this. All right, go ahead and praise him and let's see if we can get him to stack on all fours over here. That was difficult. 
<laughs> okay, praise him and release. So imagine you guys spending time. How incredible will your stacks be when you're using this equipment? And it's fun. And you can even get to the point where it's like it's so much fun, you can practice your head straight position on that too, which again, I'll show some of you that this is your first time. But imagine this. Imagine you get a dog to, to religiously stack with their front feet every time you ask them. Would that be a good accomplishment right there? Now, you get them to stack with their rear feet consistently. Then you get them to stack consistently with both front and rear. How incredible, what kind of a relationship would you have with you and your dog in the ring after you've spent the time to train them to do that? Pretty good relationship, wouldn't you say? But wait, there's more. <laughs> okay, so now, once you think you've got this down and you're ready to go, you're going to take two of these and you're going to teach your dog to stack with their front feet on these. Then you're going to teach your dog to stack with their rear feet on these. Then you're going to teach your dog to stack with their front and rear feet on these. How incredible would that be? But wait, there's more. <laughs> now you're going to flick them over. You teach your dogs to stack with your front feet. You teach the dogs to stack with the rear feet. And can you imagine if you can get a dog to stack with the front and rear? How incredible would that be? And all it takes is time. Now the thing that's going to make it so it's not successful is if you let the dog take over and the dog starts to do things on their own. You don't want that. You want to maintain that leadership right there. And now... Good boy. That was Ooh. good. Uh, Ooh, that's nice. Try to get her back. Pause. Good, okay. Wow, even one foot is good. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. How are we doing over here? Don't get too close. We're having issues with the rear paws. Okay. Don't worry about rear. Okay. Rear is advanced. Okay, front paws is all we're worried about right now. Okay, so are we getting front paws yet? Nothing. Nothing. Come here, Greta. Okay. Greta. 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 <laughs> That's okay. Don't beg. Because begging for women, they just don't respond to that. <laughs> okay, let me see this. And let me see your treat. Yep, I grabbed one of yours. That's perfect. Greta. Good. Come. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, over here. Greta, come. Greta, come. Greta, over here. Good. Greta, over here. Good. Greta, up. Good. Over here. Over here. Good. Step. Step. Greta. 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 Good. This way. Good girl. That was good. Good. Well, it's doing something. Yeah. Greta, over here. Over here. Greta. Step. Good. Yay. That was good. So at least we're moving forward to do something. And then we go back to touching on the pad and a little bit more consistent on the pad. Right. So right now, she, do she doesn't fully respect or trust either one of us. So she's kind of like, ah, you can't make me do that. And this is kind of a gauge to know we're not even close to start training yet because she won't even do the front paws. She's still got to do the front paws, the rear paws, all four paws before we even think about starting to train. Okay, so go ahead and take her, do a couple more things, maybe switch, see if you can try a different one. How's this one doing? So she will definitely 
pause up on the solid. This one is a little more difficult. Right. Texture and the I size. Think, and then she can only really get one pull. Right. But when she does get one pull, I'm still rewarding. Yeah. Uh, so we use a fit bone at home. So uh -huh. I think you know, pause up, she'll, she'll do it. Right. Um, we just need a bigger one. But this one, she's fine. Okay, let's see her do a Sarah. front paw. Hey. Sarah. Good. A little clumsy, but good. That was awesome. Okay, see if we can get the rear. Okay, so I saw that you got the rear over here. That's fantastic. That was the first time. Yeah. Now lengthen your lead. See if you can do this stuff and do more body language, not such a tight lead. Oh, more lead. Yep. That's nice. Good job. Yep. So just like, there you go. Okay, so we're going to start a session for the day, and the best way to start that session is to go ahead and do the head straight. And the head straight position is letting him know that you're in charge of this exercise right here, that he is not going to take over. But he's a cattle dog, so he's going to try. But we just keep doing the head straight. We're not worried about feet. We're not worried about ears. We're not worried about tails. We're just worried about keeping that muzzle so it's not up and down or side to side. When he gets to the point and says, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, then you're going to see him raise that muzzle up. He'll turn it to the side a little bit, and they'll get really sneaky about that. And the ones in the beginning when you first start this, especially table dogs, is they'll try to put their paw on you or flip around like he's doing right there. So this is a position where you're expressing your dominance. And so if you have a very dominant dog with primitive instincts, they're not going to just stand there for you. You know, even if you've been doing this for two years, they'll still try to fight you a little bit. Now, the couple of points here is that you can come in with your left hand and put it behind their head and say, head straight, head straight, just like that. And that's like mom saying, knock it off. Another thing, like what an alpha would do to somebody being disobedient in the pack, is to right behind, right at the beginning of the loin, you go head straight, and then you kind of grab right there, too. If you have a really dominant dog, he's going to say, no, that's not going to happen. So you've got to work into this. She's been working with this dog for quite some time, and he does really, really well. And every once in a while, he tries to throw a major test. So again, Training never stops. Okay, go ahead and let him up. Now, I want you to give me a down and back. What I want you guys to notice is not the dog. I want you to notice her hand to establish the communication, and I want you to notice the palm in the direction of how she tells the dog to go. Okay, so a nice, easy down and back, please. So he's being a butthead, and, and this dog does fantastic, and Maddie does a great job. But w every once in a while, he gets into his head that this is not going to happen, and this is one of those times right there. So what I want you guys to do is recognize that even if you train your dogs for a year, this can still happen. Things can be going absolutely perfect, and then they'll turn around and go backwards again. So when he did this, he was fighting her in the head straight. And usually that's a good indication of what's going to happen in the ring. If you try to do the head straight before you go in and they fight you, that's the type of performance you're going to get. So you have to work through this. OK, do this again, backing up nice and clean, a little bit longer on the lead. Establish your communication with your hand and give me a nice clean down and back. See, he wants to lead. Perfectly straight. Not up and down and not side to side. What if you don't have a muzzle? Even a pug has a muzzle. <laughs> 
you still have a muzzle. So I do that. I did that with him when I did the head straight. So you can't let them get away with anything. She's done this so long like this. Right. Really good. Right. I mean, I know not for her and it's not much time, but it, but it is. Okay. Well, I mean, it's good for them to, it's, it, it's real world applications. And that's why I like using this team as a demo. Because it's like, if he wakes up one morning and decides to be Ponder, then that's the way the day is going to go. And he wakes up the next day and it's like, okay, I'll be Ponder today. And it's a different Ponder, then it's going to be a good day. But this is what handlers go through and people that are learning to become handlers. It's like, it's not just all easy. What you guys see out in that ring is like thousands of hours of this stuff right here. Okay, so stack him on both of those. Make sure you, you lead him there. He likes doing stuff like that. So if you get a situation where you're into a training situation and your dog is being a total butthead, then do something fun. Break it up a little bit right there. Praise the heck out of him with a big smile. Good. Have him do it again. And make sure you're leading him there. Good. Okay, release and praise. Good. Now give me another down and back. A little better. Do that again over there. <laughs> now do a head straight while he's on the fit pause. When they're on the fit pause, they can't think about all kinds of stuff because they're thinking about balancing. So that's a great opportunity to sneak in a head straight session. Very good. Release, praise, and give me another down and back. There we go. Good. It, it's nice to be able to have dogs like that to see because, you know, we all think that we have these dogs that are so easy to train and sometimes, you know, you get one of those dogs that just does everything in the world for you and then all of a sudden something like this comes into your life and it's like, oh my gosh, and then that's when you start filling your clothes with sweat. So for those of you who think you have it tough, go borrow a cattle dog every once in a while and, and see what life is really like. But I wanted you to see this because I wanted you to see what you have a dog that has done everything perfectly, decides to go backwards and start to do some little flips and twists in there to alter your life. And at that point in time, you go ahead and make it fun, do some fun stuff, do the head straight, mix things up a little bit and then go back to your down and back your your patterns your you know your finale stuff all those different things there sometimes you have to mix things up so have things ready to do that okay any questions that's good okay shake your hand so the dog sees it shake it again Good. Very nice. Do that one more time. Shake it so it sees it. Beautiful. 
Shake your hand again. Okay. When oh, you do it, line. yeah. <laughs> That's because you're looking at the dog. Oh, right. Yeah. So what I want you to do is when you start here, everybody pay attention here. This is very important. Ah, uh ah. -uh. No treats. Yeah, there's one treat in there. Okay. So when I start off, I'm going to start off backing up. And the reason for that is because the dog will follow me and then I can turn and go. When I get here, I back up and I turn and go. Ooh, smarter than the average bear. Good, good. Turn, wait, head up, head up, head up. I know there's lots of treats. That's good. Okay, let's go. Good, good, good. Stop. Very nice. When the dog wanted to cross over, what did I do? Turn my palm that way. Right. And that prevented the dog from crossing over. And look at that. Beautiful. Let's see you do that. So you back up from that side and back up from this side. Okay. Right. That leads too short and tight. Because the dog's leading you. You should be leading the dog. So you got to shake that to get the dog's attention. See? See the attention right there? Okay, so you guys, what, what some of us are doing is what you see in the ring, where you're just basically letting the dog go. And the dog takes you from point A to point B. What you did was really nice because the dog followed your hand the whole way. And the dog looked better like that. So your goal is to do the fit paw stuff, do the head straight stuff, and get your dogs to start following your hands. And think about this. If you set up a fit paws course, you're leading the dog from this obstacle to that obstacle, from this obstacle to this obstacle. So you're teaching the dog to follow your hand. And is that going to help you in the handling part? Absolutely. Same thing. Back away from me and have your dog follow your palm. Okay, so you went over the top of your dog's head so it didn't see that. Yep, so come on back. Okay. No, it's not. No, that's because you have too much wound up. I'll explain that later, but you can let more out and it'll be better actually. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay. There you go. There you go. Look at that. On a loose lead. That's awesome. So everybody look up here. So the palm. When I'm backing up right here from the judge, my palm is facing me. Because that's the direction the dog needs to go. So wherever the dog needs to go, that's where your palm goes. So I'm coming back like this. Then I step away from my dog. When I get to this corner, I make a signal and turn my palm this way. That tells my dog, make this turn right here. And I go like this. When I get back on my straightaway, you guys should be looking up here, not at your dogs. When I get to this point, I shake my hand make my palm go straight. That means the dog's going to go in that direction. When I get to this corner, I shake my hand again, turn my palm back into the ring, and that's making this dog make this turn right here. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Now, it's not going to be super easy if you haven't established that leadership bond yet because the dog's going to go, I really don't need to do this. And that's why it gets frustrating when you guys try to train for the ring because you can't be successful like that. But where you're going to get to the point where you can be successful is by starting off earning that respect and trust with the fit paw stuff, doing some fun things, so you can use those things to your advantage to now start actual training for the ring. But if you, you, you guys can see, if you just start right now, training for the ring without all the fun stuff and without creating that respect and trust, what's going to happen? 
chaos, frustration, not total failure without being able to work through it. You know, all these different things. Okay, let's, you guys put your dogs up. Group two, group one, grab your dogs, please. All right, let me see it down and back, please. Titus. There you go. I like that you fixed that. Good. Good. Very nice. That is gorgeous. Okay, bring him back to me. Let him. Yep, you fought me. That was good. I'm so That's proud of you. Boy. Okay, take them over to the end over there. Good job. Do the head straight. Good job. All right. Wow. Okay, group two. Look at this. See how these dogs are all lined up, ready to go? Isn't that gorgeous? All doing the head straight. That's beautiful right there. When we go through the cones, the priority here is to have the dog follow your hand. So you're backing away from the judge. You step away from your hand. Your dog is on this side. I go like this to get the dog to go to that side. When I get here, I want the dog to come through here. So I move the dog this way. Move the dog this way. Move the dog this way. Get to here. I back up, step away from my hand, move the dog out, move the dog back, move the dog over, move the dog back. And all that's done with your hand. If you have to, you can use a little body too. But don't pull the dog with the leash. Okay, let's see, let's back up a little bit. Let's see this dog down and back, please. Okay, come back. You know why that didn't work? Yeah, because I You're... was staring at my dog. <laughs> see? <laughs> Even after a couple years, you still need me. Yeah. <laughs> Look beyond your dog. Okay, now do it. Beautiful, beautiful. See the dog following the hand? Nice. Good. Nice. That was gorgeous. That was absolutely beautiful. Now, what threw it off in the beginning? Eye contact. So even a dog that is a superstar on YouTube can be thrown off if you don't ask correctly. So it's important that you guys get all this stuff just right. It only takes a split second of looking at this dog to totally throw it off. A split second. And you we're gonna do a nice, beautiful down and back. And when we do this down and back, we're gonna weave through these cones right here. Because you guys have been practicing, you're the advanced team from over there. And the way we're going to do this is watch me closely. Okay, I'm going to look right at the judge. I'm going to have my palm facing the direction I want my dog to go. I'm going to back up like this and I'm going to step away from my hand. And see where my palm is pointed? So my palm is pointed forward and then I'm going to look at my watch. When I look at my watch, now my palm is pointed that direction. So my dog should go that way. 
When I get to this point here, I'm going to signal my dog, point my palm this way. Signal my dog, point my palm that way. Signal my dog, point my dog forward. Reverse my palm, back away, signal, over, signal, over, signal, over, signal, forward. And that's how I'm going to communicate through those cones. Now, if I have a mini bull terrier and I go signal over, there's a good chance we're going to miss that signal. So you have to be at a level where your dog can see that hand. The other thing is, you have to make sure that when you signal, that's getting the dog ready for what you're going to do, that you give a command. Now, if you signal and you go like this, you're telling your dog to fly up into the clouds. So that is not a direction right there. Okay, everybody got this? Piece of cake, right? Okay, all right, let me see you down and back. And lead is really, really loose. Lead is loose. Then we yep. Okay. okay, so you're going to face me as hard as it is. Come here, buddy. And then you're going to back up. You don't even talk to your dog. Just let your dog follow your hand. Okay, so Brock, you need to have your hand down so your dog can see it and put it right in front of the dog's face. Now back up and go. Okay. Okay, you don't have to like, you're only shaking it. You're not pulling with that leash. Okay, I get it. Easy. Right. <laughs> okay. I'll like and patting your head is <laughs> it is kind of like that. What's your dog's name again? Huntington. What is it? Huntington. Huntington. Okay, so I'm going to, here, I'll tell you what. Let's come out to the end over here, Huntington. Very good. Okay, so my judge is over there. Ah, 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 over here. Good. I'm going to back away, and I'm going to have my dog follow my hand. Go over here, over here, over here. Up, 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 up. Good. Back up. This way. Ah, ah, ah. Over here, over here. Good. 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 Huntington. Good. Follow my hand. Here's my hand. Good. Good. Over here. Over here. Ah, 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 ah. This way. Hey. Pay attention. Good. Oh, yes. That's good stuff. Very nice. Good. Good. Over. This way. This way. This way. Good. This way. Good. This way. Good. And forward. Good boy. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Did you have treats in your hand? I did. Now they're there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so down and back. Okay. Okay, come back. You did nothing to establish communication with that hand. You just turned and went. Okay. Okay, put it in front of his nose. That's so hard. I didn't know. <laughs> Okay, he can't see that. It's too high. That's a little better, but he goes through the cones. You do not. Oh. Okay, all you're doing is banging on that leash. You guys, what was the difference of when I had him? He followed my hand. You're banging him this way. You're banging him that way. Okay, what you need to do is hold the end of this and get him to follow your hand. And don't hit him. Come on, don't talk to him. You can talk to him. Nope, you don't want to pull on that leash. There you go. There you go. Keep, nope, you went over the top of his head. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, give him the treat. Okay, now, look at me. Stop focusing on him. 
what you're doing is you're doing a combination of what you're supposed to do and what you're seeing other people do. And the second, you guys, the second we bang on a, on a leash on this dog, the dog is saying, I'm not going to do this exercise. And I'm not going to show for you in the ring. So when I had him, what I did is I got that piece of bait in my hand and I got him to follow my hand like this. See that? <laughs> What you're doing is you're, you're just moving your hand. And see how he doesn't see that? Uh -huh. So this doesn't mean anything right here. You've got to have that hand in front of that dog's nose when you do this so he can follow that around. And then when you get to the end, you give him that treat. Yes. OK? All right, so establish communication with that hand and take him all the way around to the end on that corner over there. Okay. Let's go. No, come back. You did a good job of establishing that communication in the beginning, but then you went right back to old methods. What she did is she, when she started the gate, she put that hand right here. And when you put that hand there, can he see that hand? No. Okay, take him around. Keep that hand out there. All the way around. Beautiful job. That was fantastic. Okay, see the difference there? You guys, if we do this stuff correctly, the dogs respond correctly. If we try to mix a little old with a little new, it's not going to work. I guarantee you. Okay, let's see this dog go through the cones, please. We need the mini bull to clean up over here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So I don't care what you look like or what you're doing. I just want the dog to follow your hand at this point. Beautiful. 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 There you go. Good job. Praise your puppy. Good. And give her a treat. Go see mom. Mom's got the treats, not me. Good. Okay. Establish communication with that hand. Drop your hand lower and take her around to the end. Very nice, very nice. Good job. That was awesome. That's exactly what we're talking about right there, guys. It's got to be the dog following your hand. It cannot be you just doing a combination of the two. And the other thing is, is you've got to be very careful of eye contact because eye contact is going to make that dog want, not want to look at your hand. I guarantee that. Okay, establish communication and take this dog through the cones, please. Eye contact, too much. Too much eye contact to the dog? Yes. That was pulling. So anytime that lead gets tight, that's considered rude. And the dog will not work for you. So if you want to pull on that lead, let out a couple of loops so you have more lead outs. But you need to guide that dog around with just your hand, not pull at all. There it is. There it is. There it is. Good. That was a pull. That was a pull. That's better. Get the, get the attention. Good, good. That was beautiful. Okay, guys, anytime this lead gets tight, you've just gone backwards because that's considered rude in their mind. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to earn respect and trust. So if you have a dog over there and you want your dog to come over here, you can no longer use old methods and pull the dog over. What you have to do now is shake your hand and look at this. I don't even have bait in my hand. And this dog is like following my hand everywhere. Okay. That's what I want you to do. I don't ever want to see this lead tight. Okay, so get your dog's attention and bring your dog to, around to the end. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There it is. That was fantastic. Wow, didn't that feel better? That was awesome. Okay, which one of you has the better dog? They're cousins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which one's better? Is yours better than hers? Say yes. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, oh, yes, that's a true yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, buddy. I'm trying. Yes. I, you look at I'm getting kisses. Like, thank you. <laughs> okay. Whatever. You know, people used to ask me forever, what was your favorite dog? And I had such a difficult time answering that, and I just figured out why. It's because every time I had a dog in my hand, that was my favorite dog. And so if I won the breed, an assistant put another dog in my hand, boom, that was my favorite dog. So whatever dog is in your hand is the best dog in the entire building right there. So which one of you is the better handler? I am. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let me explain what a question is and what an answer is. And when you say, I am. <laughs> She you, can hear me. I know she can hear you. Is she driving you two home? Yes. Oh. Well, she was. She was. <laughs> Anybody have an extra room in their car? <laughs> All right. Let me see hand communication and bring your dog through the cones, please. Beautiful. Okay, now remember, the dog goes through the cones, not you. Good. Good. Excellent job. Okay, come back. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Wow. High five there. Okay, get there. Okay, take her around to the end. Or take your dog around. Come back. Yeah, there, and what's this? Um, bad habit. Bad habit. Because yes. remember, this is not threatening. Yes. But if I came up to you like that, is that positive or negative? Negative. Very. Look at Oh, she has no problem doing it that time. <laughs> okay, around to the end, please. Beautiful, beautiful. That is fantastic. Okay, you guys can go home now. No. <laughs> Okay, isn't it cool how at towards the end of the day we start seeing these things come together and the evolution right here? That was fantastic. That was fantastic. It's nice to see when you guys start to develop that communication with these dogs because then it all comes into place right there. But it's going to take a while. Don't think that just because that looked good right there that you're ready for a show tomorrow. Remember, we still have to go back to fit paws. We still need to go back to earning respect and trust before training even starts. The stuff you're going to learn tomorrow is for you guys to practice. It's not for you guys to get ready for a show yet because these dogs, most of these dogs are not even ready for that stage of education for them yet. Okay, so you've seen 20,000 people do it, so you're going to be the best at doing this, right? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Something sounds good over there. I love this gate. That is fantastic. Woohoo! Woohoo! And then squirrel. <laughs> beautiful job beautiful shake it beautiful that was fantastic and if you ever get to a point where it comes down to a free stack and you're up against the mini bull terrier you're gonna lose <laughs> they just do that all day long it's like look at me okay around to the end that was beautiful very nice very nice Palm in. Good. What? Okay, so you got the timing. You got to get in front of your dog, lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. And when you do that, they stand square. That's beautiful right there. Good. Okay, give him the treat. Good job. If you guys do this, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yes, see how perfect and square he is when you do that. But if you twist your shoulders to the left or to the right or do what you see other people do like this, you'll get crooked stacks. 
So it's best to lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. And those dogs will stand perfectly square when you do that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you don't do that, if you come in with your shoulder dipped or a little bit crooked or off to the side, oh my God. <laughs> Wow, I'm the cute dog. <laughs> yeah, you behave so well. So if you come in with a dip shoulder or you do this thing right here, you're not going to get beautiful stacks. You're going to get one foot this way, one foot that way. If you turn around and walk backwards like this and you don't lean forward, you're going to get steps like this because they're not quite sure you're not clear on your communication so you get stacks like this okay i want you to take this dog down and back and you're going to come back to a baiting judge now what's this dog's name mako after the shark oh cool i've seen those really close okay so take mako you named a mini bull terrier mako Two weeks to name him, and he earned it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's nice. Okay. That is so damn cute. Is that not the cutest gate you've ever seen? Oh, my goodness. I love this breed. Mako. Mako. Oh, sorry. Too close. Oh, very nice. Good. That was very special. Okay, put Mako back over here. Oh, aren't you sexy. What's her name again? Zara. Zara. Okay, take Zara down and back. Zara. Hey. It's mine. Hey, I have it. Ooh, much better. A little more lead out. Good. Zara. Oh, nice. Look at you. Beautiful. That was awesome. Okay, put Zara back over. What I have. Stand. Good. Stay there. Good. When I have my hands together, I get focused. But what happens when I move my hands apart? He doesn't know where to look. And if I do this, he creeps. So don't do any of that stuff you see other people do. Come in, lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. Very nice. Good job. See how better that is? Let's go. I love this dog. Marcus. Hey. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Where were you earlier? <laughs> Wow. Ooh, that was good. Okay, around to the end, please. Oh, finally! Okay, down and back.
I'd hate to have this one and the mini and best in show together. <laughs> We're out to the end, please. Okay, first dog over here, next dog right behind, next dog, next dog, next dog. Okay, so I will not tell you to do any switching. You will do all this on your own. You're fighting for it right now. Silent Patty. <laughs> 